So as part of this video, we are going to take a look at how to set up the multipass uh, and uh, kind of create a Ubuntu a Linux image instance on your Mac. Right. So the first things first, what I'm going to do is launch a terminal. We are going to use this in a while. And uh, quite honestly, I already have Multipass installed, uh, but I'm going to follow the steps anyway so that you know you can also follow them through. All right, so we're going to open up uh, Chrome and then we are going to type Multipass. And the first link that comes up should be multipass.run and we'll then just go to uh, multipass website and here we'll go into docs within docs go to how to guides and within that go to install multipass now come to check prerequisites uh, or rather sorry come to install and then go ahead and select mac os and then all of a sudden uh, you know things show up here now you can use an installer package that is not what i have done you can go ahead and do that i'm using brew and so let's open up a new tab and so the command then is brew install multipass right and this is where i go back to my terminal and simply paste here um, uh, you know brew install multipass and then hit the return key and this will then go ahead and install uh, you know multipass for me now what can happen is if um, if you know multipass is not getting installed this way um, uh, um, let me just uh, show you what you can do um, uh, okay all right i tried out multipass just too many times uh, there has to be a command which okay which i must have used okay just a moment uh, okay so what you can do is you can do brew install minus minus cask and then do multipass right if you have brew installed and you know you want to uh, install multipass these are the two ways either go ahead and just use you know brew install multipass if not then use brew install minus minus cask multipass all right so we at this point then have multipass installed great and what you see on the screen here is when i type multipass right here it goes ahead and prints like the help options right yeah it prints the help related data one more thing here if you don't have brew installed on your mac go ahead and follow this link uh, which will kind of you know tell you how to install a brew and then you can go ahead and use uh, you know this command right here and then follow the steps essentially all right so assuming that you know um, things work out good for you um, until this point what we're now going to do is create that instance within which we are going to work and let me then you know quickly uh, bring up the blackboard here and remind you of what we were planning on doing um, we said that hey you know this is our uh, host machine or host operating system could be mac windows all uh, right and linux or linux rather and uh, right now we are on a mac so this is our mac host and what we did was install uh, multi-pass uh, which is the hypervisor or image instance manager virtual machine manager and we also said we would have vs code here and we want vs code to connect over ssh and then there has to be some instance running here right now we don't have that instance right at this moment we only have multi-pass the software and what we are next going to do is um, ask multipass to create that instance for us so we are just going to type uh, multipass and then say okay also let me increase the font size a little bit so you can all right let me just okay so we are going to type multipass hyphen shell that's about it and what it is now doing is it is kind of preparing uh, you know the primary instance what it will do is download some image prepare it in the background and then actually drop the shell or terminal uh, for that instance and we'll see that happening in a while 
Uh, this should kind of depending on the internet speed, um, this should take anywhere from few minutes to you know tens or um, maybe even an hour if your internet is slower. Um, on my machine, this is like pretty fast and um, yeah, almost done. So it has launched the primary here. It is kind of you know setting up some uh, few things in the background. And once all of this is done, it will print like the details and then drop the shell. So let's just wait for that. All right, perfect. So if if you see or notice here, it says, hey, welcome to Ubuntu 24.04, uh, you know, blah, 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 all of the details. This is something of use to us, the IP address. And we'll come to this in a while. Uh, but uh, now what we intend on doing is we are within the multipass um, instance, so to speak, and we are supposed to now uh, execute few more commands just so that VS Code can properly connect with uh, the primary instance. Primary is essentially name of this machine, right? And so primary instance, we want VS Code to connect to it. So I'll go ahead and modify a few files. So let me copy the command and paste it here. So this command right here, the sudo space vim space slash etc slash ssh slash ssh d underscore config. Uh, we are going to edit this file slash etc so on and so forth, right? And we are wanting to edit this file just so that we can enable password based uh, login into the system. You know, all of this will make sense in a minute. So I'm within that file now, I'm going to type a colon, set, space, and U, and hit the return key. Once I do that, you can see the line numbers are enabled, and we are going to go now to line number 62, right? Uh, line number 62 is this. So this is for keyboard-based interactions, right? Interactive, interactive authentication. Now I want to go ahead and edit this no right here, this thing right here, this no to a yes. And to do so, to, to edit a line, what we are going to do is first come to that line, come to that point. So I need to come to, you know, uh, no, uh, the N, and then hit the I key. And as you hit the I key, you will see that, you know, Vim, the editor goes into something called the insert mode. Then I will go to the end of no, delete it, type yes. And after that, hit the escape key. Once I hit escape key, a vim comes out of the edit or insert mode and it's now in like the command mode. What I'll do now is type colon wq and hit the return key and it writes the updates to the file, right? Now again, why did we do all of this? It's just because we do not have a GUI, we do not have any visual interface, uh, or any, we cannot use like any other text editor to edit this. You can use nano or any other command line uh, editor if you already know of, but Vim, um, something I know uh, kind of decently to be able to edit files. So I have used that. All right, so the edits are made. Now what we are going to do is kind of ask the system control to kind of reload its daemon. And so let me then go ahead and execute this command, which is sudo systemctl space daemon hyphen reload. Right. Once that is done, we'll go ahead and ask it to restart the SSH service so that remote connections are possible. Again, sudo service SSH restart. And then after that, we are going to do, you know, set a password for this user. Now the user on this machine is Ubuntu. Right, and so Ubuntu at the rate primary means primary is the machine name and Ubuntu is the username. So we are now going to kind of uh, type this command sudo passwd Ubuntu and or Ubuntu. And that essentially is like, hey, set a password for Ubuntu. In my case, I'll just set the password to lowercase p and whatever you set the password uh, just, you know, be sure to note it down and that's the password you have to use going forward anytime we want to log in into this machine, right? Log in or execute the sudo uh, command. All right, so we are good now. We have 
prepare our instance to be able to be uh, you know connected uh, through SSH. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull up VS Code. And uh, you know if you have VS Code, then once you open VS Code, go to the extensions. And then from there, if you don't already have it installed, type remote and install this remote development. Uh, let me just pull up the marker here. So install this remote development um, uh, extension, right? I kind of have parts of it installed. So let me, you know, go ahead and install that. Um, once you install this, this I icon should kind of become visible right in my case i had few parts of you know this package already present um, so that's why i already had this but you should if not already if you don't have the remote extension already installed you will see this as a new icon right and once you see this click on that and you know i already have some ssh related things here go back to our terminal type uh, if conf oh sorry not that type host name hyphen uppercase i and the moment you do that you will see that the ip address is printed here which is 192.168.64.12 copy that come back to vs code go to this ssh related you know drop down uh, right here and if you don't see this drop down be sure to select remote you know tunnels in ssh here right in the remote explorer select remotes and uh, tunnel slash ssh and then within the ssh drop down here uh, you know click on this plus button and once you click on the plus button like a uh, you know user input panel uh, uh, pops up and in that you write ubuntu at the rate and paste the ip address right so we are saying hey log into this machine 192.168.64.12 as ubuntu the user right and we hit return key and once you hit the return key it'll ask you like where to save this config you know just hit the return key again and we have added uh, details of the remote machine now we should have seen it here we don't so not not a you know thing to worry about go ahead and click this refresh button and the moment you click this you will see that the ip address is visible here now what i want to do is uh, ask vs code to connect to this instance right so let me to show you the magic now let me just okay let me just take vs code on the left side and our uh, machine the primary instance on the right side okay so i'm going to go to this option here 192 you know 168.64.12 and click this arrow button which says you know i would like the current window of vs code to attempt a connection um, a remote connection to my instance and uh, let me go ahead and do that now what i'll also get myself out of the way it's saying hey you know do you want to continue i'm saying yes then it asks me for the password and this is the password that we set i'm going to type p because that was the password i set you can set some other password but use that password here now at the bottom here you notice that it says hey ssh colon 192.168.64.12 and if that has happened then it confirms that the connection is established Right now, we're going to do some experiments to prove our point that you know whatever edits we make in VS Code are actually happening within our um, virtual instance or virtual machine here. So let me go ahead and execute ls, and then let me type uh, kind of you know mkdir ldd. So we are creating a directory uh, which is ldd, and within that we will work. So let's go into ldd cd into that. And we see there is nothing here. Perfect. Now we come back to the VS Code and say open folder, right? And when we say open folder, you'll notice that LDD is available here. So this is a hint that we are actually looking inside the file system of the instance that we have created, the primary instance, or the instance by the name primary. So click on LDD here and click OK. What we will notice now 
is right here it's saying it's on ldd directory within and it's on ssh on 192.68.64.12 all right we'll go ahead and now click this new file button and call this file test right and we'll go ahead and write hello world uh, into the test file now because we are making all the edits on vs code which is connected to our virtual machine or the ubuntu instance within multipass if i execute ls here in the terminal you will notice that the test file was created right and the file we created was in vs code all right so now if i were to do like a cat test we'll see that the hello world is available here which is the content of the file so let's just quickly revise as to what happened here so we had you know primary uh, and primary was a virtual machine that multipass created and within this we created the ldd directory right and uh, we also said that vs code was over ssh uh, connected to this machine right and so what we then asked is uh, opened ldd in vs code and then added this file test and the content of which was uh, hello world uh, right and so this hello world and this test file all of a sudden appeared here because of this ssh tunnel or connection and then within that we saw that you know hello world is available so what we are going to do uh, is you know hide this window going forward and only work within the vs code environment and also connect or kind of create a terminal uh, you know that is same as the terminal in our virtual machine and so this way vs code becomes that nice isolated environment wherein we can develop our code and try out our experiments so um, in the videos following this we'll explore you know which part of driver is what what files to write uh, what part means which and so on and so forth